The Younger Dryas was a period of significant cooling in Earth's history that happened between 12,900 and 11,700 years ago, near the conclusion of the Pleistocene Epoch. The Younger Dryas ended when the entire globe warmed, signalling the start of the current Holocene Epoch. Now a 13,000-year-old human skeleton from West Africa reveals that archaic humans lived at least until the start of this sudden ice age. Most paleoanthropologists believe that modern humans, Homo sapiens, originated in Africa around 200,000 years ago. However, fossil evidence from Africa for the earliest individuals of Homo sapiens is limited. One issue is the difficulty of identifying actual modern humans in the fossil record because not everyone agrees on what traits are required to be admitted to the Homo sapiens family. Many of the fossils supposed to be early members of our species actually exhibit a combination of modern and primitive characteristics. Some paleoanthropologists believe this suggests our early member of our species had a wider variety of physical variation than we do now. Others interpret this as implying that more than one subspecies of Homo sapiens resided in Africa in the past, maybe sharing some characteristics. Shortly after our species' emergence, modern humans began to spread over Africa. Archaic humans were pushed away everywhere we went, and they were replaced by modern humans. The Iwo Eleru skull from Nigeria implies that archaic humans were able to limit modern human spread for a longer period of time than the Neanderthals in Europe, until at least 13,000 years ago. Reanalysis of the 13,000-year-old skull from a cave in West Africa reveals a skull that appears more rudimentary than its young age would suggest. The findings show that early human forebears did not disappear rapidly in Africa, but rather coexisted and possibly even mated with Homo sapiens until relatively recently. The skull, discovered in the Iwo Eleru cave in central Nigeria in 1965, does not resemble a fully modern human. It is longer and flatter, with a prominent brow ridge, resembling a much earlier skull from Ethiopia, which is estimated to be around 200,000 years old. In fact, despite its age of barely 13,000 years, the cranium appears far more primitive. This indicates that human evolution was more complex, and the shift to modern humans was not a one-way street, and archaic human populations did not perish after giving birth to the modern human race. Based on tooth wear, the age of the Iwo Eleru individual is estimated to be more than 30 years. The skeleton appears to have been purposely buried, but what remains of the skeleton is mostly crushed shards of the large bones. The shafts of the humeri are strong and thick. The shafts of the radius and femur are also strong. The extant remains indicate that the Iwo Eluru man was of middling height and physique, no taller than 165 centimetres. One theory is that the Iwo Eleru man may have descended from an archaic lineage that died out 200,000 years ago, possibly due to modern human activity. Such a long, seemingly separate lineage that ended in West Africa some 13,000 years ago, with no evident trace of living descendants, suggests that the Iwo Eleru branch most likely represents a different subspecies of near-modern human. Indeed, they may have continued to coexist with their descendants in West Africa, even sharing genes, until more recently than previously assumed. The researchers claim their findings highlight a genuine lack of understanding about human evolution in the region. Researchers have a few fossils, but no understanding of natural variation within populations. Furthermore, we would expect the evolutionary situation to be deep and intricate, rather than straightforward. According to a study titled Population Relationships of Later Pleistocene Hominids, a Multivariate Study of Available Crania, there are startling parallels between the crania of the 130,000-year-old Solo Man of Java and the 200,000-year-old Omo Kibish Man of Ethiopia and that of Iwo Eleru Ma. Unlike other Middle Pleistocene fossils thought to be from the early stages of the Homo sapiens lineage Omo I from Ethiopia, has unmistakable modern human characteristics, such as a tall and globular cranial vault and a bony chin. The globular cranial vault is the space where the brain sits inside the skull. The age estimate of 200,000 years makes it the oldest undisputed Homo sapiens fossil in Africa. 
Paleoanthropology is famous for its heated arguments, one of which has raged for years is the evolutionary origins of modern humans. Several ancient human species once lived in southwestern Ethiopia's Omo Kibish formation. Our distant ancestors had various motives for settling in what was then a lush volcanic rift valley. Rainfall accumulated in lakes, providing easy access to food and clean water. Volcanic rocks provided raw materials for sharp stone tools used by early modern people. 200,000 years ago, the Lower Omo River Basin's ecosystem was comparable to what it is today, though more moist and less arid away from the river. The vegetation was lush, and a consistent supply of water created a combination of grassland and woodland species. This remarkable fact has been noted for over 50 years, since the discovery of the Omo skulls in 1967. If you think that skulls from Africa and Asia could not possibly be related because of the geographic distance, we should note that straight-line distance from Ethiopia to Nigeria is over 2,000 miles, or 3,500 kilometers, or about the same distance as Ethiopia to South Asia. Ancient humans had the ability to traverse deserts, rainforests, and savannas, and there is no reason to suspect that early Homo sapiens were confined to Africa until 60,000 years ago. Therefore, the Iwo Iliru man of Nigeria and the Solo man of Java, and could be offspring of the Omo Kibish man of Ethiopia, and an archaic Homo sapiens rather than a separate species. What does all of this mean? As we've discovered in recent years, the evolution of our species is far more complex than a linear process in which certain populations slowly evolve into others over time. Some archaic human groups transitioned into modern lineages, but their history did not finish there. Several of these populations continued to breed with modern offspring until quite recently. In fact, by 13,000 years ago, humans were beginning to live in villages and practice agriculture. Nevertheless, only eight African archaeological sites have provided possible early anatomically modern Homo sapiens fossils from the late Middle Pleistocene, between 350,000 and 130,000 years ago. We can only date humanity based on the fossils we have, therefore we cannot claim to know the definitive date of birth of our species. The study of human evolution is continually in motion, with boundaries and dates shifting as our understanding grows. Nonetheless, these fossils demonstrate how adaptable humans are as we survived, prospered, and roamed areas prone to natural calamities. Despite our current differences, the first Homo sapiens were far more dissimilar to one another than we are today. The main differences stemmed from the fact that groups of humans evolved independently over tens of thousands of years. If we could travel back in time, we'd discover that none of these archaic Homo sapiens were precisely like us. Some had strong jaws and teeth, others had a large occipital bun to which robust neck muscles were joined, and some had a sloping forehead and a massive brow ridge above the eyes, as seen in our earliest ancestors. However, scientists still consider them to be early Homo sapiens, since they had some contemporary human characteristics, including a narrow pelvis, a huge brain in a ball-shaped cranium, slender teeth and a narrow jaw. Other research of sub-Saharan genomes found that between 2% and 19% of their genome came from an archaic population that diverged before the separation of the Neanderthal and modern human lineages. The unique DNA discovered in West Africa, very near the Iwo Eleru site, is not related to Neanderthals or Denisovans. Experts believe the interbreeding occurred approximately 50,000 years ago, around the same period that Neanderthals were breeding with modern humans elsewhere in the world. Yet it's unclear whether there was a single interbreeding event or if it occurred over time, but ghost DNA is regularly found in human genetic material. So what became of this mysterious bunch of archaic Homo sapiens? Scientists aren't completely sure. They might have died out, or they might have been entirely assimilated into modern people. Physical samples are significantly more difficult to get in Africa than they are for Neanderthals in Europe where fossil evidence is abundant. This is due to the continent's hot and moist climate. But how did modern humans become the world's dominant human species, eradicating and absorbing other human species along the way? The answer may be that our subspecies, 
Homo sapiens sapiens may have just been more organized, more efficient and more aggressive than other human populations. As evolutionary biologist Nicholas Longridge put it, an aggressive offensive strategy is also an effective evolutionary strategy. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos.